Not before time. Hello, sunshine. How are you feeling? Not before time, is it? Not a word, not a letter. A letter? Or a card or a phone call. You're not on the telephone, man. Well, she is next door. Any form of human communication would have sufficed. A message in a bottle, a carrier pigeon, or a series of smoke signals from your roof, anything. Just so as I knew I had some form of human contact. Man, I've been up to my ears. We're with the job and the new house and the wedding. And those are things you put before my health, are they? I just can't risk infection. Everyone's going down with this Chilean flu. I just haven't got the time to be sick. I haven't got the plague, you know. We haven't got to paint our front door yellow. You're not going to go down in writhing contortions with your hair falling out. In other words, you've had a fairly trivial illness. You haven't been at death's door at all. I didn't say that I hadn't suffered. I've, I've coughed so hard, I think I've ruptured my lungs. Chilean flu, it's fascinating, isn't it? Isn't it fascinating that a virus can travel so far? Just like Asian flu a few years back. When I had a temperature of 103 on the verge of delirium, that was the one thing that consoled me, knowing that I had such a fascinating virus. I suppose it comes in off the ships. I might have known I'd get it. According to last night's Look North, a programme of local news and views, it's reached epidemic proportions. What a month. Out of the forces with nothing to come home to, no bright job prospects, no mates around, you getting married, and some bug transports itself from the Andes across two continents, two oceans, and zeroes in on me. <laughs> You're not the only one by far. I've been cursed by the Incas. It's typical of my rotten luck. Half my firm's come down with it. Oh, but I was the first, the trailblazer. Dear me, no wonder you're on the verge of delirium. What's this? Reader's Advice Forum, a frank exchange of personal and private fears. What are your personal and private fears, Terry, apart from relegation and baldness? Loss of friends, desertion in time of need. My God, that pales compared to this poor fella. Dear me, did you read this letter? Anguish, Margaret Arbor. Yes. Where do you buy manacles and a set of stocks these days? Mail order, I suppose. No, oh, comes in a plain wrapper. Those letters stagger me, you know, they really do. I know I've been away for five years, but dear me, I never realised that bondage was that popular. It isn't, not round here. Certainly not on the Elm Lodge housing estate. Don't you be too sure, mate. Have you seen the addresses on those letters? They're not from Copenhagen or Hamburg, you know. They're from Market Arbor, Evesham, Peterborough, places like that. Hell's teeth is even a Harrogate. If that magazine's a fair sample, come Saturday night, half this nation's behind locked doors in frilly underclothes, beating themselves to death with riding crops. Well, not everyone watches Match of the Day. Healthy people, do. I was thinking of missing it myself this Saturday. If uh, someone had been well enough, I was planning a little treat for that someone. Well, I'm not being whipped. <laughs> That's not what I had in mind. If you were well enough, I was thinking of taking you out to a meal. Posh new place up the coast road. Bottle of wine. Great big steaks there. Why? Well, it might be the last chance I get, you know, before I get married. For the two of us to have a little chat. A quiet evening. A civilised, reflective evening. Oh, I see. It's guilt, is it? Guilt at having left me here to rot. All right. If you don't <laughs> want to come out with me, if you don't want to accept this last gesture of my friendship... Oh, well, if you're going to put it that way... Put it what way? You know, when you put that voice of yours on. What voice? You're on a needle making a charity of <laughs> voice. If you mean that my voice conveys a certain amount of emotion, well, I don't deny it. This week is the end of an era for me, and, well, this meal was to... to commemorate it. You make it sound like more like a memorial service than a novel. <laughs> well, it is in memoriam, in a way. But where's Thelma? Is she ill and all? Thelma doesn't rule my leisure habits. I don't have to ask her permission. She doesn't issue me with pass-outs. Anyway, <laughs> Thelma's booked. What for? Soliciting? <laughs> for a girls' night out for a hen party. Her sister's coming over today from Canada for the wedding. Hey, I'd forgotten Thelma had a sister. Did we ever know her? No, I don't think so. She's five years younger than us, and at school that was a generation. Uh. And I think she got a job abroad as soon as she got her O-levels. What's she like? I can't really remember. It's only in my latter, more mature years that I started noticing schoolgirls. Hey, I might be all right there, at the wedding. With her being the bridesmaid like, and me being the best man. Isn't that one of the best man's perks? Isn't that one of the unwritten laws? The best man pays for the taxis, reads out the telegrams, and has the bridesmaid. <laughs> Terry. You never know. Uh, <coughs> you don't... Um, Might as well chance me arm. Don't jump to conclusions. I'm not, mate, I'm not. Don't panic, don't panic. I'm only going to chance me arm. I'll leave the rest of me anatomy till I see the lay of the land. 
I wasn't referring to... You never know. To... Perhaps she'll be the lay of the land. You know, these Canadians. Terry, I'm trying to say something important. You mustn't take things for granted about the wedding. Oh, I see, Bob. And that's what this meal is about, is it? Just the two of us, like, a sort of uh, reflective evening, wasn't it? Right. I understand, kidder. Do you? Certainly. And thank God you've come to your senses at last. You're having second thoughts, aren't you? No, I am not having second <laughs> thoughts. You never give up, do you? What I was referring to was bridesmaids and best man. Oh, I see, day manner. It's moral outrage, is it? <laughs> Just because she's Thelma's sister. Look, I don't care if you seduce Thelma's sister. As long as you enjoy yourself at my wedding, I'm happy. What I was referring to was not your sexual menace. It was your status. Status? Well, lack of it. What status am I lacking in? Best man status. What? The best man at my wedding, my best man, if you like. Yes? Is not you. I mean, it's you in principle, you being my best mate and that. Everyone will know it's you in principle. It just won't be you in fact. <laughs> I'm not your best man. Well, I didn't know you were suddenly going to reappear after five years, did I? I didn't know you were going to suddenly reappear after five years out of the blue like that. And I'd already asked Frank Clark. You don't have to explain. You think I'll let you down, don't you? You think my earthy working class ways will prove a little too rough round the edges for your new middle class in-laws with their caravans in the Lake District and their Masonic handshakes? <laughs> How could someone like me possibly officiate at your wedding? Somebody who's liable to turn up in overalls and clogs and toast the health of the bridesmaids in mess. <laughs> If I hadn't asked Frank Clark, you'd be the first choice. Oh, I see. I wear the substitutes shirt, do I? I sit on the substitutes bench. I suppose if he makes a lousy speech, I'll be called on the last ten minutes. Look, Terry, <laughs> be reasonable. Not keeping in touch like that, you'd just become a memory. A fond memory, of course, but just a memory. A photo on a mantelpiece, an IOU in a sock drawer. <laughs> a scar on my shin from that time we fought over Brenda Davidson. And that's all I am to you, is it? A scar on the shin. Long time, five years. You could forget someone altogether in five years. You didn't forget the IOU in your sock drawer, did you? What was that for? <laughs> Coach trip, Morecambe Illuminations, 1967, five card brag, 11 pounds, eight and six months, 11 pounds, 42 and a half in decimals. I'll let you off the half. <laughs> You'll get your money. You'll get your money. I've been away, you know. I know. That's why you're not the best man. So that's what this meal is about, is it? To make amends for the betrayal of friendship. Well, the offer's open. Great food, big helpings, all on me. Oh, I don't know if I can now, Bob, after that news. What with me virus and that blow, I, I can't think of eating. I doubt if my appetite will ever be the same again. I'll have the prawn cocktail, fillet steak well done, chips, onion rings, mushrooms, grilled tomatoes and sprouts. And can we have some more bread while you're at it? Certainly, sir. How's the melon? Oh, it's lovely, sir. Fine. Then the entrecot, please. Medium rare. Uh, some vegetables for you, sir? Uh, no, thank you. Just a green salad tossed. And, um, no potatoes. And would you open the wine now so it could breathe? Of course, sir. <laughs> thank you, sir. <laughs> thank you, sir. What's the matter with you? Green salad, no chips. I like to watch the carbohydrates. Oh, dear. Well, I must say this is very nice, Bob. Very nice indeed. Cheers. Cheers. I'm glad you were able to make such a miracle recovery in the last 24 hours. Well, that's the thing with these foreign diseases. No, but it's amazing, isn't it? When I asked you to help me lay a new carpet in the new house this afternoon, you'd lost the use of both <laughs> legs and your sight was failing. <laughs> Today's wonder drugs? Fine, lovely, thanks. <laughs> no hard feelings then, kidder. Uh, Not this man. It hurt, Bob. I can't say it didn't. I mean, who's been closest to you over the years? Not even your mother, never mind Frank Clark. When you first went out into the world, your first date mixed infants, it was as long ago as that when we met, you know. I oh, know, I remember, even though we were only five. 
The teacher said to me, there's your desk, there are your crayons. Put your hand up if you want to be excused. Play time's at 10 o'clock and don't talk to that Terry Collier. Yeah, <laughs> that Miss Iron Marsh always did have it in for me. It's amazing how character shows at such an early age. Even at five, you were trouble, a hazard to other children. Don't talk to Terry Collier, that was like our school motto. I was your first friend. I was the first person who stole your tricycle pump, the first person who split your head open with a brick. <laughs> Frank Clark can't claim things like that in his wedding speech. He can't recall colourful anecdotes from the past. I don't think many colourful anecdotes from our past are fit to go into a wedding speech. <laughs> Frank Clark didn't sacrifice five years of his life for you. Oh, God, we're back to that, are we? Yes, we are, mate. Five years of sweat and toil and pain. One day we're going to hear about that thigh of yours, that famous war wound. Not from my lips, you won't. You told us that apart from getting married in Germany, the most memorable thing that happened to you in the army was getting tattooed on your left buttock. <laughs> so what happened? Did the needle slip? That waiter never did bring that bread. <laughs> Is your friend all right, sir? Oh, yes. He was cursed by the Incas, you see. And, uh, during the full moon, he loses the use of his left leg. I see, sir. <laughs> hey, you clocked those two over there. I oh, clocked you, clocking them. I saw you give them what you think is your winning look. Oh, I've won a few with it. You've lost hell of a sight more. <laughs> They're tasty, though, aren't they, eh? Well, they certainly cured your limp. Or was it a case of take up thy bread and walk? Yeah. <laughs> well, what I would like to know is, what are they doing here alone? I mean, in a place like this? They're just two nice girls having dinner together. It does happen, you know. Even before women's lib, it was possible to see unescorted females in public places. On a Saturday night? Spare? They're up to no good. <laughs> You've got some bigoted sexual ideas. Widows are desperate for it. Women without handbags are depraved. Negroes are more virile. A few years back, any fella that played tennis was a puff in your book. Whoops. Yeah, but a few years back, we wouldn't have been letting the minutes tick by like this. Shall we ask them over? No, certainly not. Well, just ask them to join us. They can pay for themselves. No. <laughs> I'm not out on the pull. It's supposed to be the end of an era, isn't it? That's what this meal's supposed to be yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, I suppose so. A few years back, they wouldn't have stood a chance, would they? A few years back? No. I mean, we weren't half bad, admit it. We didn't half put it about. Oh, I won't argue about that. We were deadly. No woman was safe. We were a team. A terrible two. The dynamic duo. Twin strikers. Yeah, Chivers and Hurst. Lee and Bell. Yeah, what was, what was the best season? Oh, 1965, definitely. It was a vintage year. It was a very good year for blue-eyed girls. Blue-eyed, <laughs> green-eyed, cross-eyed, we took all the... <laughs> A string of victories. We were the champions. Champions of the Roxy Ballroom and the Marimba Coffee Bar. We were the champions! <coughs> oh. Gracias, amigo. <laughs> Thank you very much. Excuse me, please. Thank you. <laughs> 1965. Did, uh, did you really have a string of victories? What? Well, I mean, I know we took a lot of girls out that year, but did you really have any complete, total, knockout, all-the-way victories? <laughs> well, if you're going to put it that way, um... Yes, I am. I am putting it that way. Be honest. Complete victories. Complete. All the way, like. All the way. Honestly. No. <laughs> I thought as much. What about you? Ah, oh, once got to extra time with Dorothy Armisen, but... Yeah, you never crack that defence. <laughs> I was just thinking. What? A whole season. We must have been the only twin strikers that never scored. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. The end of an era. I will. Today is the first day of the rest of my life. I will. It's one way of looking at it, isn't it? They were grand days, though, but... Aye, the best is yet to come. Great times. It's one way of looking at it, isn't it? When you think what we must have been like, eh? I mean, now we're mature and civilised, but then... 
dear God, we didn't know out from out. So randy, we chased everything that moved. <laughs> Mind you, we were choosy. They had to be awake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was the only thing that mattered. Well, that and football. Yeah, you know, I think that uh, we're still the same people, basically. You know, underneath our civilised exteriors. I mean, I know that I'm more mature now. Sexually, as um, yeah, certainly, an experience like, but um, still all down to sex and football life, isn't it? Pretty much the same for everybody, I should think. No, there's some people who don't like sex. <laughs> sex all sorts. My twin obsessions. That's what Thelma says. Sex and football are my twin obsessions. She reckons that the height of ecstasy for me would be to make love to her in E-block during the second leg of a European Cup time. <laughs> By the time our team gets into Europe, making love in public will be legal. <laughs> Nigel Hutchinson, you know Nigel, lives up behind the ice oh, rink. Aye, aye, aye. He had to see a psychiatrist about his obsession. Never. Little Hutch. Yeah, yeah. He had to see a doctor. The doctor said that what was wrong with him was that subconsciously he wanted to make love to every woman in the world. Well, what's wrong with that? No, but with him it was an illness. He'll drive himself mad. Poor little Hutch. Knowing that he's not even going to get through North Shields, never mind the world. <laughs> Ah, oh, well, there's always somebody worse off than no. yourself. At least I don't have to go through that with other women. At least I've got Thelma and I'm content to be with just her. Oh, come on, Bob. You've been with Thelma for years, but that's never stopped you from shopping around, especially at school. I am on the brink of matrimony. That's something slightly stronger than carrying a satchel home from Park Juniors. Yeah, well, those two over there might be your last chance to grab somebody else's satchel. I don't want to. I don't want to. I know that... Well, I know that you're separated now and your marriage didn't work out, but... Well, there must have been a time, there must have been a time with you and Yuta when you were first courting or when you first got married, when... when your eyeballs didn't swivel out the sockets every time you saw another frown line. Bob, there is never a time in any man's life when he doesn't notice other women. Even my uncle Norman, he's 82 and bedridden. He left on his meals on wheels, lady, the other day. <laughs> no. Aye, he's refused to go back. <laughs> But wasn't there a time with you and you two when, when you got engaged? When love was a many splendid thing? Oh, you mean that period when you used to thrill to the sound of her voice and give her secret glances and all that rubbish. The gooey period. If you like, if you like. When, when, you, when you weren't looking at every other bit of passing skirt. Well, I don't know, Bob, you see. I met you when I was in the army. I was a war bride, groom. <laughs> I wasn't in a town, you see. I was on a barren, windswept German plane, and the only excitement was a sing-song and a naffy and a cup of lukewarm cocoa. <laughs> there wasn't any spare, you see, so I never had to test out my, fid my fidelity. I don't know, I'd gone on over here, running this sexual gauntlet of the permissive society. Well, I've managed. Well, yes, but I mean, that's probably because you're saturated with sex. You're only marrying Thelma because you're ready to limp into retirement. <laughs> I'm aware of other women, you know. I'm aware of other women. I have to drive every morning past the Ministry of Pensions. <laughs> not telling me all those thousands of teenage typists aren't a navigational hazard. But a mature person doesn't forget his responsibilities as a fiancé and a road user. So how come last Tuesday you ran into the back of a laundry van? <laughs> Clutch slipped. Well, watch your brandy doesn't slip while you're clocking them two over there. I am not clocking Get those away. two over there. I am not clocking them. I'm aware that they're there. I'm vaguely aware that one of them's pretty. Which one? The one with the dark hair and the black dress and the pretty eyes and that cute way of wrinkling up her nose when she laughs. <laughs> oh, I see. It was just a vague impression, was it? Yes, but compared to Thelma, well, how could I? You'll find someone yourself one day and, and you'll realise how wonderful it is to have found life's partner. It's not Bob and Terry anymore, you know. It's Bob and Thelma and their friend Terry. Thelma is my partner in life now. There's new words in my vocabulary now, words like marriage, trust, fidelity. Boredom. <laughs> Old words I have forgotten, like tail, spare, score, crumpet. <laughs> old days and old ways are gone forever. I bet we could pull those two over there, though. <laughs> those days are over, you've just said. I just bet we could, that's all. I bet we could. What are they doing here, eh, alone, in a place like this, a few years Bob, back? Bob, 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 we're entering into another era, remember? You've told me so at least ten times tonight. I bet we could pull those two bits of spare and score. <laughs> Your vocabulary's coming back. I fancy that dark one. Actually, I fancy both of them. My God, you've got Hutchinson's disease. <laughs> I wonder. 
I just wonder, don't you? I just wonder if the old technique's still there, the old magic. Waiter, well, watch this, I've learned a trick or two. Uh, waiter, I wonder if you'd do me a favour. I wonder if you'd ask uh, the two ladies in the corner if, um, if, uh, if you'd say that uh, we think we recognise them from somewhere, and if they don't think we've been too forward, perhaps they'd care to join us for coffee and liqueurs. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good hell, that was good. <laughs> a few years back, we'd have just stopped at that table on the way to the lab and said, you fancy a jar? <laughs> a few years back, it would have been a few jars and nothing. They've got the message, they've got the message. Down, boy, down, hold it back. <laughs> well, just remember, remember, this is your fault, it was your idea. I can handle it, I always could. Yeah, well, if they turn out to be touring American heiresses on the lookout for bits of Northern Rough and whip us two back off to the States and set us up in mansions in Palm Springs or Hawaii with yachts and hovercrafts, it wasn't my fault. <laughs> They're coming over. They're only coming over. This could be the night the twin strikers find their feet or lose their heads. I knew we could do it. The old magic's still there. <coughs> oh, hello. Uh, how do you do? Uh, would you care to um, park it? Thank you. Uh, I hope you don't think that uh, we were being too uh, well. Um, no. No. You see, it was just that. Um, well, it was just that we thought that we, we knew you from somewhere. Oh. Yes, I'm Bob, and this is Terry. Hello. I'm Norma, and I'm Susan. Norma, Norma. Susan. Susan. <laughs> Thought uh, they looked familiar. Yes, uh, you've never been to Palm Springs, have you, or Hawaii? Oh. <laughs> uh, Park Secondary Modern. Pardon? Uh, Park Secondary Modern, that's where you know us from. <laughs> but you wouldn't remember us. You were in the seniors when we were in the juniors. <laughs> you mean, you remember us from then? Bob Ferris and Terry Collier? Of course we do. You're the one the teachers warned us about. <laughs> and don't talk about Terry Collier. Yeah. <laughs> Not that you would have talked to us. Not you two. Really? Well, we couldn't have had a look in. Not with you two. Oh, really? You were just objects of desire. Figures to idolise. Oh, young girls' fantasies. <laughs> Glimpse to <laughs> So near, yet so far. <laughs> Isn't it lucky we met? <laughs> We we'll let you pick us up. No, 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 no. no but we had no. to take a chance of meeting you in the flesh. <laughs> you were legends in your own lifetime at Park Juniors. Mm. Oh, well, I hope we're not going to let these two young ladies down, Robert. It's uh, it's not easy being a living legend, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've lost weight since those days. Yes. Oh yes, yes. He watches his carbohydrates. Oh. oh, but you're just the same. You're always worse. Wiry. Uh, <laughs> would the would the girls like a drink, Bob? Uh, oh. The bar's closed. Pardon? Uh, it's too late for a drink. The bar's closed. What a shame. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. If we want a drink, we'll have to go on somewhere. Oh, I oh, see. Yes. Goodness <laughs> me, the bar's shut. What a pity. Well, we'll have to go on somewhere. <laughs> well, where were you thinking of going? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> um, uh, that, 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 that's a good question. We could go back to my house. Um, we could go back to my house. You see, I, I have this house where, where we could go back to. <laughs> we could go back to my house, which would be a good place to go back to. I'll tell you what, Bob. Why don't we go back to your house? <laughs> <laughs> yes, why not? We could uh, play a few records and have a few drinks. What a good idea. Go back to your place, have a few records, play a few drinks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that might not be a very good idea. Why? why? Uh, um, it, it might be indiscreet. Something you'll regret in the morning. I won't. I won't. I promise you I won't. I won't either. Oh, well, I think it's a bad idea. Why? Please, why? Because you're marrying my sister next week. <laughs> I don't feel well. Terry's come to see you, Bob. No, oh, not before time. Well, here's your tea. Now, be sure and take that pill, Pip. Mm. Oh. Would you like a cup, Terry? If there's one, made, Mrs. Ferris, I. It's no trouble. How have you been, Petal? <laughs> I have been at death's door. No, you haven't. Your mum says your temperature's never been above 101. <laughs> that bug's losing its power. Poor little bug. Couldn't take the northeastern climate. Even now, it's winging its way back to the foothills of the Andes. Knackered. <laughs> it's fascinating, though, isn't it, eh? How a little virus can travel that far. It's fascinating how long it's taken you to get here. Three days I've lain here. Hasn't Thelma been round? No, she had a touch of it herself. That's why she didn't go out with the girls the other night. Oh, I see. You sure it wasn't because of the other night she hasn't been round? She doesn't know about that. Susan didn't let on. Oh, didn't she? Don't sound so sorry. Well, don't get at me, mate. It was you that leapt in there. I tried to hold you back. <laughs> and what came over you? 
Uh, wine went straight to your loins. Well, obviously, I wasn't myself. Obviously, that bug was still in my system. Obviously, I was delirious. Obviously. Here, I brought you this month's. It's spreading. Works up, painting, North Berwick. <laughs> that place is just full of Edinburgh widows. I want to ask you something. Anguish Market Arbour's back, even more anguished. He's lost the key to his stocks. <laughs> I want to ask you something important. And what about that, eh? Eh? Mall of the month. She's going straight into my next fantasy. If you'd come round earlier, I was, I was going to ask you something important. Ask away, little pale face. <laughs> I've had second thoughts. Ha <laughs> ha! You. Not about my bride. No, you mean the bridesmaid. Well, I can't blame you. I've had a few myself. She's a bonny girl, that Susan. Yes, you'll be all right there at the wedding. Of course I won't be all right there. How can I be all right right there? She'll be thigh to thigh with the best man on the head table. And I'll be stuck away in the corner somewhere next to my mother and one of your idiot's cousins. No, you won't. <laughs> if you're thigh to thigh with anybody's thigh, it'll be Susan's thigh. That's what I wanted to say to you. I want you to be the best man, Terry. What you said the other night is perfectly true. We've been through everything together, even Chilean flu. So, how could I get married and not have you as my best man? My best friend in all the world. What about Frank? Oh, forget about Frank. I'll square it with Frank. That's not important. The thing is, will you do it? Right. I don't know what to say, Bob. It means a lot to me, Terry. Well, of course I will, mate. It's my privilege. Here's your tea, Terry. Thank you, Mrs. Ferris. I shouldn't get too close if I were you. You don't want to get reinfected. I'd risk that. For a friend. You know, everyone's going to <laughs> Isn't it awful about poor Frank Clark? He's developed complications. <laughs> He's going to have to miss the wedding and everything. <laughs> Is he? <laughs> Wrong. 